Good afternoon, everyone. Here is another episode of Unstoppable Leadership with guest John Cavendish. He is technically right now in Vietnam. He or Vietnam. He just got married. <laughs> So say congratulations, drop comments down below because that's always a wonderful thing when you have a huge change in life like that mm. to celebrate it. Um, I don't think we celebrate that enough and we need to. So congratulations on that. He is also the founder of Mass Conversion Marketing and we're really going to dive deep into that. But first, I want John to introduce himself. I want him to talk a little bit about what he did before he started this and why you should think about starting your own business now and if you have started your own business start thinking about the different ways of marketing and about those conversions so we're going to be talking and diving into that so ladies and gentlemen get your notebooks ready because you are going to need them john <laughs> welcome well hi don right, thanks for the amazing introduction <laughs> and um thanks for having me um, as you can tell, I'm not actually from Vietnam originally. Uh, I'm from the UK, but I've been in Vietnam for four and a half years. And you know, I met a woman a couple of years ago. We just got married. Uh, she's Vietnamese, but you know, we're gonna we're married, so we can travel around together. And basically, I've been operating location-dependent businesses for the last uh, nearly six years now. So being able to live anywhere you want to. And that's always awesome. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, if you're thinking about striving and growing your own business, you should honestly think if it is not a physical based business that you have to be physically somewhere, especially with the technology and the global reach that is out there now, it's just amazing to be able to do that. So exactly. And, and also because of this pandemic, everyone now knows how to use Zoom. Everyone, no one expects you to have an person meeting so even where before you might have to give them zoom instructions now everybody knows how to you run zoom so yeah. it doesn't matter where you are in the world to sell anybody in the world like most of our clients are in the u.s almost yeah. all our clients are in the u.s that is amazing yes technology is extremely important and i want you to dive a little bit into what did you used to do in your professional yeah. life before you changed over to doing this Cool. Yeah. So I'm, how old am I now? I'm 31 now. Uh, so I graduated 10 years ago. And in between those 10 years, I've done maybe like, <laughs> actually like three different things. So I graduated as an engineer. So I was an engineer. I did engineering university. I graduated. I became a, a mechanical engineer on trains, which is completely nothing like I'm doing now. That is so cool though. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, you know, it's a white collar job sitting in an office you know, do designing stuff, um, doing approvals. Like, yeah, it wasn't my thing because I'm, I'm like entrepreneurial ADD. I sit at a desk and although I can churn out anything and I'm pretty, I'm a quick learn. So I look like I'm smart. I'm not good at finishing things. So, which is one of the big things about leadership is find people who, you know, uh, reflect your weaknesses so that you can better do things. So I have an right hand guy who's amazingly organized and finishes everything I start because I do not finish. I did everything I start, <laughs> I finished like this much of the stuff I start. So anyway, so I became an engineer, did the graduate training scheme, uh, did it for two years, got some opportunities to, you know, go to Australia with a job and then I moved to London. And as soon as I moved to London, I had like a few thousand dollars in my bank account, like very little money, but I made the change to wanting to, basically I thought making more money would make me happy. So what I did was I became a consultant, like a contractor where you sell your, you know, sell three or six month contracts on the same type of job to basically the exact same company I left before, but for three times the money. Oh, wow. And I was 25. I always looked a bit older. So I, you know, grew my beard a bit longer. So I, everyone assumed I was like 30. Uh, I was sitting in this office. They, put, they gave me like a 2 million pound delivery project. Uh, not for me. No, I, that was the value of the project. And I was like 25 years old being like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I better make sure I deliver this project all right because they're paying me a lot of money to do it. Yeah. But it, I was no happier. So I was doing the exact same job and I was no happier even though I was making more money. Um, and then during this time, I wanted to figure out if I could make money online. So I was listening to podcasts. I was like, yeah, going to conferences, reading different things. And I thought I'd be a blogger. I didn't work. I can't write or I'm, I have no, no determination to write. Um, 
And so I heard about this thing called FBA, like fulfilled by Amazon, making money, selling stuff on Amazon, basically. So the first business I started uh, was an FBA business, which is literally finding an opportunity on Amazon, the Amazon marketplace, um, creating your own brand to, to launch a product in that opportunity, sourcing a product from somewhere, whether that's China, US, Europe, and then selling it. So it's finding a market opportunity and then building a product to fit that opportunity. So I struck pretty lucky on my second product. I did really well with that. Um, we did a couple of million in revenue in the first two years. And then it became like a kind of a flat level of income as revenue, not profit. Everyone will tell you their revenue numbers and e-commerce, yeah. no one will tell you their profit numbers, but it yeah. made good money. Um, and then I used that as a springboard to start other businesses. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I wouldn't I'd recommend if one business works, double down on that business. Don't start anything else. You're going to make a lot more money doing that. Uh, but these are all lessons learned through through a lot of screw ups, a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of lost potential money, because you know, as one of these business gurus says, you don't make your fortune from making money; you make it from not losing money. Uh, and true. I definitely, definitely identify with that. <laughs> Very true. And Keith Cunningham, that's it. I love him. He's like a Southern and, American dude, he's amazing. <laughs> exactly, and I I feel you on that. We tried, or I tried Amazon. Yeah, that did not work out so well with me. I actually tried a, um, I guess it was like a third party wholesaler type deal. Mm. And we didn't know what we were doing. And we actually got shut down by Amazon because something, I guess, wasn't right with something. And we never did figure out what it was. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm already done with that. So mm -hmm. For people to be successful in that, hats off to y'all because I really, and I consider myself fairly technologically smart, but not like brilliant, but enough to really get around in things. And for whatever reason, I just could not get that. And I don't know why. Um, that's all right. I mean, the, the thing about that is, is that if you'd seen 10 of your friends do that the exact same way and you know, were successful, you would have take, done whatever it takes to make that work and you would have made yeah. it work. And that's the secret with any business model is having enough belief that it's going to work to continue doing it yes. because and we can make anything work. You know, you could make productized service. You could become a digital marketing consultant, even if you didn't know that much about digital marketing, just because all your, you know, you have a group of peers who are doing it. And I had a group of peers who were absolutely killing it on Amazon. So I, you know, I had no choice but to succeed. Otherwise I'm the failure. You know what I mean? And that's exactly. why and I started I think... podcasting. Yeah, and I think that's why exactly why I didn't succeed because I didn't have that support group. So you bring that important point up. When you're doing something, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you surround yourself with people that do know what they're doing and are your support group because you are correct, John. You will not have no choice but to succeed because you don't want to fail. So it's an interesting point that you brought up on that. Exactly, and track metrics. So if you're not, if you don't have an exact support group, like you can join a mentorship group. I'm a member of a few different like coaching or mentorship groups, and I have a coach, and they like hold you accountable to numbers. So if we're talking about direct sales, which is what we do now for our agency work, um, and we have laps, so leads, appointments, presentation, sales, and you record your numbers every, every single month for your laps, and you know you can't lie. You <laughs> know, like that's your that's that's how much effort you put into it. And if you're accountable to those numbers, then you're going to make sales because even if you're the worst salesperson ever, somebody's going to show up in your funnel who needs, 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 needs what you're offering. You just that need to get enough is, leads into the top. And that's a good point. So talk a little bit about the funnel process because I have some friends that I am starting to lead through that process. Mm -hmm. And people think funnels have to be complicated, but it's really not. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. So, I mean, I am by no means a master of funnels. Like I've done very little paid traffic. Uh, we've always done cold outreach for our agency. So cold outreach means that you're just sending someone a message who didn't ask for a message. <laughs> so um, if it's well-written, it's cold outreach. If it's badly written, it's spam. Uh, but we call it cold outreach because you've got to find people who fit your demographic. And if you reach out to enough of them, there's going to be someone who's looking for your service. So my favorite ways of doing cold outreach at the moment, if it's a professional service, is 100% LinkedIn. LinkedIn's amazing. Um, but you have to systemize and automate. 
because you need to be reaching out to 75 people a day, following up four times with that person once a week. So if you're doing this yourself, you'd go absolutely crazy, but you can use some tools or you can use a service and they'll do it for you. Uh, there's that, there's cold email and there's cold calling. Um, lots of people are super scared of cold calling. I mean, I do not like cold calling, uh, but it's one of the fastest ways to get through to the people you really, really want to talk to. So you, know, you build a list of people, whether it's a list on LinkedIn, list on LinkedIn you build using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which is a back-end piece of software it's provided by LinkedIn. It's like 100 bucks a month, but you get a month free, so you do that for free. You can then message those people directly, or you can actually rip the whole email list off LinkedIn of all these people's emails using a piece of software called AnyLeads. Uh, so you've got all the emails of all those people you just built, 1,000 emails. Use a piece of software for, for cold email, such as uh, reply.io or Mailshake. So you dump all those emails in there. You make a four email outreach sequence uh, talking about your offer. So super short and sweet. I, I can help you with this. Uh, do you have this problem? Reply yes, reply with your phone number, I'll give you a call. And then they enter into the sales process. So this is like super ghetto way of getting them into the process, but I'm all about the sales process and making the conversion rate as high as possible from the leads part, which is when they come in, to the sales part on the way out. So a basic sales process that works really well is a triage sales process, so three stages. Um, simply, stage one is getting them to come to stage two. So get them onto an appointment, get them understanding that they want to meet you. Uh, so that can be done literally in Messenger on LinkedIn. It can be done via email, or it can be done on a five-minute phone call, like you know, calling up, do you have time to talk next Tuesday at 4 p.m.? Uh, what's your email? What's the best number? Then add them to an auto-reminder system so they, so they definitely show up. So I like Calendly putting it in and then having automatic email and text reminders so that they actually show up to your meeting. Yeah. Uh, stage two is discovery process. So this is actually the part where you actually pretty much sell them. So you run a discovery call. So a discovery call is figuring out what their problem is, what their pain is. So once you've done this a few times for your specific offer, so your specific product, it becomes very easy. But always start with a framing statement. So on this call, we are going to talk about X. Uh, the outcome being that, that either we think that you're a good fit to work with us about X, or we can stay in touch and uh, you know, and I can offer you any tips or anything that you know that to help. Is that okay with you? And then question, question, question. Pain. Why us? Why now? Why this? Uh, what's it costing you? What's the upside? And when you can, if you can calculate the upside, that's how you charge. As we were talking about before the podcast, big money. Because if they're looking at an opportunity to make an extra call for a million, half a million dollars, then they should be able to pay you 10% of that because you're going to help them access that, that opportunity. Yeah, So exactly. at the end of it, you frame it up for the presentation. You say, okay, so if we can, if we can fix this, if we can help you get to this, this result that you've defined with, the, with them already, um, can, we, can, I, you know, can I share with you a plan of how to get their next session? And then we do the pitch. The pitch is 90% the same for everyone because it's all about your company. They have their goals at the start. You have the pricing at the end. And that's it. That's kind of like a, a sales process for any kind of service in this day and age. Um, but when you want to do high ticket, when you're not trying to close them on one call, because if you're one or 2K, you can close them on one call. Not, yeah. you don't have to go through this whole long, long process. Yeah. And I think that's what I've noticed for a lot of um, different people. If you are under a thousand, you could pretty much automate it and they'll buy it then. And you really don't have to get on a call. But if you're talking above that, then they really want somebody to talk to. They want to know what your process is. They want to know why. And you're building that relationship while you're on that call. So you do bring that good point. So now let's bring in the the micro offers. I've been mm. hearing a lot of talk about that, especially since COVID. What do you think about that? And what do you think about that process? Sorry, but I don't actually know what a micro offer is. How, how big is a micro offer? So some of the micro offers I've been hearing is like, exactly what it's saying, like nine to $10. And then some of them are even lower than that. And I think for some of them, it's almost to me, it's just a lead magnet type at that point. Uh, so, I mean, it sounds to me, uh, I haven't heard the terminology, but it sounds just like a tripwire. So, you know, the old psychological pre-sell, you sell somebody a seven to $10 product, they've given yeah. you money once. So they're going to give you more money. 
So Tripwire, $200 product, $2,000 product, $20,000 product is the usual like kind of funnel of people's stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, that stuff works for sure. Um, one of the, the best things I've seen for that through a coaching group I'm part of is running like a super high value, um, what, do you, what do you call it, web event. Don't call it a webinar, call it a web event. Yeah. You, know, you can do the outreach and you can say, okay, four hours of super high quality content, you'll figure out how to do this, it's only $47, $97. Um, then you can, you can even get them on the phone to close that. You're probably going to get them on the phone to close it to sell them again on what it is. Yeah. Um, but that's a tripwire for selling them a you know, $5,000 a month consultancy package because once they've seen how it works, you've shown them how it works, you've shown them exactly how to do it, they know they don't want to do it. <laughs> doesn't matter if you, you know, because it's a lot of work. <laughs> like, exactly. And you do bring up that point because, like I said before, people can go out and find most of the information that we're talking about mm. if they want to. Oh, but it's sure. got it. to do with time. And then you figure out, oh, I really don't want to do this. Just like I realized, yes, I need to get my web page up, but do I really want to keep spending the time to do it? No. So therefore, I'm going to find somebody that is going to do that. And that's a good point in doing that. So when you started this, how quickly did this take off? Um, so... Once, once, I, once we got onto the direct sales, so after the e-commerce, like, it took me a long time to learn what I just what I just told you in five minutes is what it took me a year to learn and a lot of waste, a huge amount of wasted potential revenue and a lot of wasted money on advertising and marketing and I got a good coach. Um, so I think people always underestimate the amount of time it takes to dial in the offer that resonates with the market. So there's always a messing about for, you know, it could be two to three months of, this works, this doesn't work, this works, this doesn't work. And then it's, yeah. that, that's the frustrating part and that's where people give up because they're like, oh, this isn't gonna work. Yeah. But as soon as you start getting traction, like as soon as you close one, then it just becomes a waterfall. So actually that happened to us in the last week for another service, which is, I wouldn't recommend starting multiple businesses. Another service that I started with a business partner and it's called Seller Candy. What it helps, it helps Amazon sellers to, or to have an assistant in the back end of the Amazon Seller Central. So you pay a set amount per month, like four to six hundred dollars, and you get an assistant who's fully trained, who'll do anything you want at any time. So we've been in outreach for that for the last two months. Got like one call, one or two calls, and it was like very, very, very frustrating. And then the last week, uh, we had a webinar, um, got leads from all these different ways we've been doing it, and we closed an extra six thousand dollars, five and a half thousand dollars of recurring revenue this week, added to the business. That monthly is recurring awesome. revenue. And, and, yes, when, I mean, and when did and that, you say that, that was called? So frustrating. Um, and what did you say that was called again? Uh, Seller Candy. So S E L L E R Candy. C A N D Y. You'll see the website kind of sucks. Like websites don't matter if you're doing direct outreach. It just has to not be a complete, um, yeah, completely not, yeah, complete rubbish. I don't want to don't want to swear on your podcast, but it doesn't need to be completely rubbish. <laughs> I think that that's interesting. Uh, that's definitely so. I don't know if anybody is on my page that does Amazon right now, but if they do, I'm definitely going to send them your way because that sounds like to me that that is a huge time saver to me. It mm, would be. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, for sure. So we're partnering actually with my business partner there. He used to run an Amazon arbitrage lead generation business. So we've actually just been talking to his network and getting some partner webinars as well. And that seems like a, such an easy way of closing your business. Uh, if you have anyone in your network who has a list already and has a similar audience to who you want to sell to, offer to run a webinar. It's so easy, easy money for them because you can give them you know, one or two months worth of revenue for the business. So they make you know, 3K for just doing a, setting up a webinar for you. And easy for you because you've got the trust of them already, trust of their audience. They can intro you and then you just give them a presentation. There's always going to be someone on the call who, if there's like 50 people on the call, there's going to be at least one person who wants to buy it. Yeah, exactly. So this has been some really informative and you keep bringing up a point. So I'm, on, I'm going to bring it up about simple websites because some of us like want to make it all fancy and mm. all of that good stuff. But if you are just selling one or two products, it really does not need to be fancy, correct? Yeah, one page. Um, if you even need a website, to be honest, if you're doing starting your outreach, 
I would use a landing page builder that has your offer on it, like maybe with a video at the top explaining your offer if you really want to. I never used to like making videos, so I would just have a text site. Just so if they follow your email address, then they don't get, like, this This domain doesn't exist. Yeah. Because you're going to talk to them. Like, as long as you're talking to somebody, they're building the rapport, or they're building the trust in you. Because at the end of the day, selling an expensive product is, is this, isn't it? It's the relationship. That's the reason exactly. somebody buys from you. Exactly. And there's so many options out there. So if you don't want to build a website, you really honestly don't have to because there are so many different avenues out there right now to where a website, I'm not going to say is obsolete, but it is part of that. Do you really want to have it? And some people do need to have a website. Like one of my people that I'm working with, she's an artist. So she and mm. I honestly does need to have a website. She needs to showcase her work. She needs to have that ability to have that because she is going to have downloadable print print or downloadable prints. Mm. So the person can actually print it right then and there, or they can order it to be professionally printed. So those I can see where having a website is important. But you have things like Google Meet, you have Zoom, you have StreamYard, which is what I'm using right now. Yeah. There is many different avenues to where you can record your videos and you can upload them to a landing page really quick. It doesn't take that long. You can use Vimeo, YouTube. There, There is just a ton of different avenues to do all this. For sure, and just don't hold yourself back by thinking you've got to make a website. Like, if it's holding you back, then just buy the domain, set up a forwarder to your LinkedIn profile, and just start outreach. It, yeah. If the website's the thing that's stopping you from doing outreach, just don't build it. Like, yeah. <laughs> give yourself a week, and if you haven't done it, say, "All right, I'm going to forward it to Google. I'm going to forward it to LinkedIn. I'm going to forward it to my Facebook profile. If it's a social media outreach, yeah. like most of the most of the things that hold us back is like not taking action on the items which are going to add revenue." We take action on all the busy stuff like you know answering emails, paying bills, stuff which makes us feel busy. But in reality, we only do 10 minutes of work a day. Yeah. Like we spend eight hours sitting in front of the computer and do 10 minutes of work towards our goals. Yeah. And I'm I'm also guilty of that. Like, you know, everyone gets guilty of that and have to check ourselves and check in with ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And there's um actually I haven't downloaded it yet, but there are trackers that you can actually download on your phone and it can show you exactly how much time you're actually wasting. And I'm going like a little bit of me does not want to download that because I'm like, yeah. Oh, it's automatic now. If you've got an iPhone or if you've got an Android phone, it will tell you. Um, yeah. And if you've got Facebook app or link or Instagram app on your phone, if you, you the stats are in the app. Like yeah. actually in the app already. So you can go in and be like, oh shit. Oh sorry. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I uninstalled all those apps because oh, it's just such a waste. Like, like an hour. Like when you looked up, I looked at my wife's phone, and I was like, "Do you realize we're spending two and a half hours a day <laughs> on average <laughs> on on social media?" And because we all do, like, yeah. it's, we all do it. Exactly, and I even have to be more tight with my time because I'm still working for an employer. Yeah. So I'm going like, I have to have. A very tight timeline and I think that's why I'm loving doing these podcasts because it is keeping me accountable because I need to be on here when I said that I'm gonna be on here and it's still creating that content because right now we got it live streaming to my personal page business page and YouTube and then once it's done all I have to do is download the voice upload it to the podcast which I will be releasing a huge amount of sessions at one time to the anchor podcast and it's actually on Spotify. So it is going to be uploaded like uploading 28 to 30 at one time. And I think that's why I love this so much because it gives me that accountability. Okay. You're going to do this and you're going to get it done. And that way there's no excuses. You can't dwindle and you can't dawdle. So you have to do it. That's amazing. Yeah, I like that. I like that strategy. And also, in terms of uploading podcasts, a tip which I heard from, um, I was at a podcasting um, roundtable meetup uh, last year. And these, some of these guys have got like, you know, podcasts that launch into millions of downloads in like six months. Yeah. And their biggest tip was actually basically what you're doing now, which is to buffer content and do one episode a day. So the release schedule of one a day. And then when you name them, name them with like very specific keyword searchable terms. So because you're doing one a day, people get used to hearing your voice every single day, 
which is perfect. And they'll also see the new release come out when they subscribe to you. But also, you could be, you know, you can add searchable terms to this because Google's starting to rank podcasts in search above, oh. like, you know, like you people used to use YouTube and put their YouTube videos yeah. in search because YouTube ranks really well. Now podcasts are going to be even better because there's so few podcast creators relative to YouTube creators. Yeah. And also, you know, if you have write down when you're recording it, like the big takeaways from that episode, because otherwise you're going to have a whole pile of content, aren't you? Of um, searchable things like, you know, sales systems or, you know, like, and then and kind of spammy, not spammy, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. keyword stuff, stuff. So like how John Cavendish made a million dollars through X or yeah. Amazon FBA or something like that. And then you've got like the keyword searchable thing and it's got the number in it, which it has to have. It's got the, yeah, what it's got the keyword of the thing they're looking for. And yeah, I've got nothing I, wrong with writing keyword stuff I, titles. I was just going to say that is a good tip because I didn't even know that. So now I can put that in my toolbox. So see, this is why I love doing podcasts. You have so much information out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's right at your fingertips. When you're downloading podcasts, you can listen to them when you're traveling. That's another reason why I love them. And they're actually highly addictive and you can learn quite a bit. So we're about ready to wrap up. And I always ask my guests, what is one last good nugget that you can give them to get them started either in their own business or just even thinking about it? What's the one thing that they really need to be thinking about? Um, that's a good question. So my, my two biggest things uh, for, for starting a business or understanding is write down all your ideas that you have, but it's about model and belief. And that's why I started my podcast, because I wanted to, when people ask me, like, how do I make money in Amazon FBA, I want to just create a series, like a mini series of this is what you do. But the biggest thing is like model. So is it a model that can scale? Like stuff that's just us doesn't really scale, um, unless that's all right, if you only want to make a certain amount of money, or if you think you can charge this much for your time. Um, so what model is working? What's the easiest model for you to operate? And what fits your lifestyle? because I was always more of a lifestyle entrepreneur. Um, and then belief. So seeing someone else just like you, who's no smarter than us, doing it. Yeah. Um, and it's, so that's on my podcast, what I wanted to do would be, was to get like people in my network, friends who have a successful business in each one of these models. So whether it's, you know, they're making money off coaching, they're making money off, um, you know, like me, Amazon e-commerce, e-commerce, uh, agency, like someone who has a successful business, come and talk about it, how they got into it, and what belief they had in order for it to, for them to actually be successful. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, you can make a lot of money coaching. You just need to charge the right amount of money for your time. Like, exactly. Yeah, you know, I know people that make, you know, 20 plus thousand a month just coaching, but you just need to figure out what the value proposition is and what you can offer to, to get that result for someone. Exactly. And that's another thing I think a lot of coaches struggle with and I know I struggled with it is knowing that what you are worth and uh, you know, that's why you have coaches out there that are barely making minimum wage because they don't think they're worth that. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. yes, you are. You have the life experience you have, you're either running your own business or you've had leadership experience. Like all of mine combined together between my education, my leadership experience, my real life experience, there's a ton of it out there. So you just have to know who you're going after, who's your target market and be willing to be really authentic, be willing to be raw sometimes depending on what you're coaching about mm -hmm. and letting people know that sometimes you have those failures and talk about them because nobody's perfect. I don't care which coach you get. I don't care if it's Tony Robbins, which I absolutely love Tony Robbins. Don't get me wrong. I love Tony yeah, Robbins. Me too. But I've done all those events. <laughs> he is not perfect. And he talks about that in his talks, does he not? It is absolutely amazing that he's willing to share that information. So For sure, yeah. And I mean, I, yeah. Also, I'd agree with that. Uh, change, Tony Robbins <laughs> changed my life. I went to all these events. I'm doing the leadership program, so I'll be a, a leader there in the next couple of years. Love oh, Tony Robbins. That is just totally awesome. And I didn't, I wasn't even planning on bringing that up. I guess that just might be the 
brainwaves that are going on. But it is just amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, take those nuggets, write that down, start thinking about it. Because like we've been saying the last couple of days, when is a good time is now. There is no other great time. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to get back to quote unquote, the normal that is mm. done and gone. It is time for you to get off your keister, start writing it down, <laughs> and let's be real about it because you have so much to offer. So I'm going to wrap this up like I usually do. If nobody has told you today, you are unstoppable. You are the beacon of hope. And John, thank you for the great conversation. Thank you for the great tips and ideas because I'm definitely going to be taking them and using them <laughs> myself. And I hope everybody has a great evening and thank you for joining us. Cool. Thank you for having me, Dawn. It's been awesome. Oh, before we do jump off, what is a way that they can get in touch with you or come find you? Um, well, I mean, if you want to drop me an email, you can email me at john at massconversionmarketing.com. Um, you can check out my new podcast, which uh, which we've just been, I think we're on episode eight now. So that's my, that's on all the platforms, anywhere you can find it. But YouTube's the best because there's video on YouTube. And I've been doing some sketch along on iPad while I do the training ones, which I think is pretty cool just to try it out. Um, so you can actually plug your iPad in, use Ecamm Studio, and then, then write on it as you go. That's pretty um, cool. What else? Yeah, just drop me an email or check out uh, the Location Independent Startup Show on YouTube. All right, awesome. All right, everyone, have a good evening.